Amen. This is another day that the Lord has kept us from all hurt, harm, and danger. And we want to say thank you. Thank you. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you once again for your love and kindness and your tender mercy. Lord, we're coming to you with bowed heads and humble hearts. Lord, we're asking that you will reach out to us. Embrace us with your love. Lord, we ask that you will just lift us to a height that we have never been before. Lord, we ask that you will come into the service on today, Lord. Touch each and every woman, daughter, sister that is represented here today. Lord, we ask that you would encourage our souls as the word goes forth. Lord, in anything that is not like you, we ask that you would remove it today, Lord Jesus. Remove it from our life. Lord, because we know we are covered in your blood. We are covered in your blood. And we know that everything is with you, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will trust us to live the life that you have set forth. And anyone that is found short of the glory of God, that they will get it right. The time is now. The time is now. The time is now to get it right with the Lord. Lord, we ask that you will bless those that are coming forth on today, Lord. We ask that you will bless our leader. Strengthen his body. Give him the strength to go on for you. And Lord, our messenger on today, we ask that she will have a word sent from you that someone may be touched, someone may be blessed on today, Lord Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We thank you today, Lord. We thank you for the hour. We thank you for this moment that you have set. We know it's not promised. It's not promised to any of us. But we thank you because you are good. You are merciful and you are kind. You are omnipotent. There's none like you, and we thank you and give you all the praise. And the people of the Lord says, amen. Amen. You're not on the hands of the praise team. God bless you. Praise the Lord, great Emmanuel. How many of you love the Lord today? Oh, that's 10 people. I said, how many of you love the Lord today? Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to worship the Lord. We have a guest who is not really a guest. She's right here from Greg Emanuel, born and raised. Amen. But she is Sunday Best Season 6 winner, a gospel Stella Award winner. A, a, she's performed all over the world to millions of viewers, and she's here to worship with us today. And that is none other than Miss Tasha Paige Lockhart. Let's praise the Lord for her as she comes.
blessed. We are truly blessed. My, my name is Sister Martise Parson, and I am standing before you to decree and declare that we are survivors. And I need all of my beautiful ladies in your purple or whatever color you have on to decree and declare with me with the litany. You will have the litany on the left and right of the projectors. Ladies, are we ready? I will praise thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Congregation, ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people. Congregation, God has given us the power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt us. Congregation, blessed be the Lord who daily loads us with benefits. All together, as a child of God, I have benefits. I am healed, I am royal, and I have an inheritance. Nothing shall separate me from the Father's love. I am God's creation. Amen. We are all survivors.
everyone to clap your hands, all ye people, and give him glory. Just look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're going to sit on this roll. You got to be a praiser, because he's been a wonder in my soul. Have you been a wonder in your soul? Act like a praiser. Act like you appreciate. How you going to act? How you going to act? without even having a praise team up here. Oh, but we're thanking God. God is good, isn't he? All the time he is good. Help me honor the Lord to our great leader, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, our pastor, who is on an assignment today, but we are praying for our pastor. Amen? Amen. But we are here. Thank God for a GEI family. You may take your seat. God is good, isn't he? All the time, he is good. Just tell somebody he is a wonder. Oh, yeah, you better speak it now because on this week, I'm looking for him to be another wonder. Oh, yeah, anybody looking and expecting something great for the Lord to do in your life? Oh, you better put some action to it. Faith without works is dead. You better work your faith and put that praise in place. Oh, come on, put that praise in place. That's what we come here. We come to praise the Lord in advance and what he has done. Come on, all the praises. You know what you're supposed to be doing, great Emmanuel. Come on, you know God's been good. He's been a wonder in your soul. Everybody got a testimony up in here. So you ought to put a praise on it today. God is so deserving. It is offering time. It is offering time. Those of you that are paying your tithes, I'm going to ask you to come. Of course, we're going to move hastily because we are in for a treat on today. So those of you that are paying your tithes, all tithers are standing, and all tithers are coming to stand in the aisle. Of course, this is what we do here at Greater Emmanuel. We feast on the Word of God when it says in Malachi 3 and 10, bring all the tithes, which is the tenth into the storehouse so that there may be meat, food in my house, and test me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. Hallelujah. We're thanking God for giving us the ways and means. Hallelujah. So this is our time to give back to him. Our tithers are coming. Amen. God bless you. How many know there is a blessing in paying your tithe and giving God the tenth? Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time, this opportunity that you've given us to have jobs. It's a blessing to have a job. So, God, we thank you. We come to appreciate you for being able to give this tent and be obedient to your word. We give you honor and praise and glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Tithers are coming at this time. God bless you. Hallelujah. If you're, the ways and of giving are on the screen. Those of you that pay your tithe, you're coming. God bless you. Amen. You know what to do. That's it. That's it. Hallelujah. Sometimes you look up and, and you see how people be blessed. That's because they're being obedient in paying your tithe. We're not robbers in the house of God. Y'all better say amen. We're not robbers. Of course, we're going to give God what is so due to him. These tithers are coming. And those of you that, I want you to get, those of us that we're going to do something different today and we gotta do it quickly, ladies. All of my royal ladies in the house, I want you to stand. Those of you that have your royal seed and have your envelope in hand, we asked you to pull out your royal seed. Those of you, I want you to, Get in this line and get in the aisles because we're going to march with our royal seed. All right? Just step in the line. Those of you, I ask you to have your envelope. Just step in the aisle right quick. We're going to do this quickly. We're going to do this quick, quickly because I want to hear the word of the Lord. That's it. It's a blessing to just be able to give, isn't it? I said it's a blessing to be able to give. The scripture says in Luke 38... Give and it shall be given unto you. Praise the Lord, everybody. I am Sister Jasmine Jones. And I am Missionary Angelia Trailer. And we are coming live 
from GEI Coach, okay, man? We are Amen. in our Women's Weekend Survive Her. Survive Her. Survive Her. Let me, let me tell you a little bit about our weekend, okay? We had a beautiful time this Women's Weekend on Friday. Turn to your neighbor and say on Friday. Friday. Court was in session, baby. And we, the sisters, the amen, sisters. the sisters, we talked about the importance of sisterhood along with the story of Rahab. And it was a beautiful time, an amazing time full of yes, fun, laughter, and spiritual guidance. Amen. And on Sunday. Sunday morning. Whoo, did not our hearts burn at our first up. lady's message. Get somebody else to do it, okay? <laughs> if you weren't in the room, you was missing out. Yes, our first lady did. preached the word, okay? And right now, we are preparing for, what's, what's our speaker's name? Sister Crenshaw. Sister Evangelist Crenshaw, Crenshaw from Crenshaw. South Carolina. All the way from South Carolina. And she's going to give us a beautiful message. Amen. Amen. But guess what? In this conference, we want you to also be blessed in your giving. Yes. Now, the Bible says in Luke 6, give and it shall be given unto you. Good measures pressed down and shaken together and running over with men giving to your bosom. With the same measure that you meet, it shall be met with all. Now, if you give, you can expect a blessing. But look here. We that are in the building, we have these special envelopes that were designed by our own first lady that says, survive her. Now, one thing about our bishop, he is a very, very smart, very wise man. And he made sure that you knew how to give. And he made sure that you knew that if you plant a seed, you will reap the harvest yes. of it. Now, he was wise enough to also let us know, make sure that there were different ways of giving. Hey, guess what? If you are not here, you can still give. Look on your screen. You can give by Giblify. You can give by Cash App. We even got our own app that we can give on, and that's what I use myself personally. I got my ATM card, my credit card, my debit card. However, the Lord has blessed me to be able to give. I make sure that I give by my GEI app. Hey, guess what? If you ain't got um, social media, if you don't have a cellular device, you can mail your check to 1910 Schaefer Highway, Detroit, Michigan, 48235. And also, what's the other way again? We even got PayPal. Yes. We got text to give. So it's no way you cannot give because here's the thing. You can tithe your way into blessings, but you can give your way to even more. All you got to do is have the purchase in your heart to bless the house of God, and God will turn right around and bless you back. Ain't that right, Sister Jasmine? That's right. Oh, that's right. It's nothing like giving. Nothing See, when you got a closed fist, you can't receive nor can you give. But if you want more, come on and bless it. Today we are giving a gift. It's only a gift of $150. Even if you don't have the 150 get as close to it as you can. Hey, you can even partner up with somebody. They give 75 you get 75 You still reap the blessing of giving because you gave it from your heart. If you purchase in your heart, if you got a dollar and 75 cent, if you got a dollar and 50 cent, give what you can. We're going to take it. And we're going to trust God to bless you a hundredfold. Ain't that right, Sister Jazz? That's right. Oh, that's right. All right. Y'all have a blessed one. We are excited. Come on. We want you to be a survive her. Yes. Yes. Guess what? We still got some more to go in this service today because we want the word of God to come forth. We want you to give so you can receive. Yes. Hallelujah. Y'all be blessed. Right. Let's clap our hands for our first lady. Come on, you can do better than that for our leading lady. Hallelujah. Now is our time for consecration prayer. Let's go before the throne of grace. Father, we thank you for this glorious morning. We thank you, Father, that you've allowed us to see another day, God. We're asking, Lord, that you touch us right now, God. If you find anything that should not be, oh, God, take it out in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we've got a yes for you today and for the rest of the week and for all the days of our lives, Father. God, we're asking, Lord, that you strengthen us, Father, so that consecration isn't just in the moment of this service or on Sunday morning, but that it is a life 
lifestyle, Father. You said to be set apart. And so today, God, we come before you as a royal priesthood, as royal women, asking, Lord, that you'd anoint us so that we can be in your will and be in alignment with you, Father God. We declare and we speak over our week this week in the name of Jesus, increase and overflow, well-being, goodness, our mental health, our emotions are stable in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, you are defeated. We plead the blood of Jesus against every attack. We attack. We come against every dark scheme in the mighty name of Jesus. God, we've got a yes on our lips this morning. And God, we've come with a disposition of expectancy. God, we are ready for revival, not just today, but throughout the week in the name of Jesus. Revive our mindset. Revive our perspectives. Revive our attitudes. Revive our disposition. Revive our homes. Revive our marriages. Revive our children. Revive our jobs, our careers. In the name of Jesus, God, we say yes, Lord. We say yes, Lord. We're putting the yes out in the atmosphere. We say yes, Lord. And God, we're asking that you go there to those who are sick, those who are immobile. And God, we're asking that you anoint them right now. Push back darkness. God, you said that there's power of life and death in our tongue. And so, God, we speak, Father. We speak victory over their bodies. In the name of Jesus, we come against sickness. We speak to inflammation. We speak to cancer. We speak to diabetes. We speak to whatever it is that's trying to bound us, bind us up. We come against it right now. And God, you said, Lord, whatever we bound down here, you'll do it up in heaven. Whatever we loose down here, you'll do it up in heaven. And so we declare that your word is true, that your power is working, that you will do the impossible. You are omnipresent. You are omniscient. You are Jehovah Rapha. You are El. You are El Shaddai, you are Jehovah Rapha, you are the Lion of Judah, you are the bomb in Gilead, you are Alpha, you are Omega. And so God, we don't pray to a statue, we pray to the living God. Hallelujah! We pray to the living God in the name of Jesus. And God, we curse every wicked one in the name of Jesus. We curse every lie, we denounce every lie, we denounce every scheme now, God, we send our leaders' names up to you. Bishop J. Drew Shear and Dr. Karen Clark Shear. God, give them strength. Give them innovation. Give them new perspectives. God, give them progression. In the name of Jesus, allow them to be tapped in with you. In the name of Jesus, God, you said you build a church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. Hell, you won't prevail. Hell, you won't prevail. In the name of Jesus, and we'll continue to give your name the glory, the honor. It shall be thine. God, touch our leaders, touch their bodies, lower the blood pressure. In the name of Jesus, remove the swelling. In the name of Jesus, and put revival in our church. Put revival in our church. And God, we thank you, and we bless your name. I dare you to just send up a praise and just say amen. Oh, come on, lift up your voice in this room. I'm ready for the word. Ready my heart. Ready my mind. Ready my feet. There's already a dance in me. I need to turn in and say, God is already doing it. Oh, come on, one more time. Use your authority. Let's set the atmosphere. It's already been set. Let's keep pushing forward. One more time, turn in and you're saying. Oh, come on, get happy off your own stuff. Get happy off of what God is getting ready to do. Turn to your neighbor and say, God, get it on it and do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're moving right along. God is good, isn't he? God is good, isn't he? God is good, isn't he? I speak to every nerve in the name of Jesus. Everything that's not functioning, For Jesus will reign in my life. I dare you to lift your hands and say, Reign, Jesus. Oh, come on. I dare you to say, Reign, Jesus. Hallelujah. Following this introductory video announcement, you will be in the capable hands of our amazing guest, Sister Tasha Lockhart.
Lady Maxine Y. Kershaw is a native South Carolinian and is a licensed evangelist missionary for the Church of God in Christ. She is married to Bishop Keith A. Kershaw, pastor and founder of Genesis Church of God in Christ, who currently serves as the chief operating officer for the International Church. They have one daughter, Rachel Victoria. Lady Kershaw is a graduate of South Carolina State University, where she earned a Bachelor of Arts and a Master of Arts degree in Speak Language Pathology. She also has a Master of Science in Reading and Literacy and has earned her doctorate in education from Wadden University. She is a retired educator with over 35 years of service. Affectionately called Lady K, she serves as the only lady to her husband and the first lady to her church. Lady Kershaw was blessed to minister at the 69th and 73rd Church of God in Christ International Women's Convention in 2019 and 2023. Lady Kershaw is a published author and released her first book entitled The Year of Release, Daily Manna, a 30-day prayer journal in April 2020. Lady Kershaw's motto is, she was a woman with an issue who has been made whole, for in him she lives, moves, and has her being. What's going on? Well, I am just so excited about our speaker. And this, uh, this woman of God has been so just inspiring in my life. And I'm just so glad you heard her amazing introduction. So I'm looking forward to this amazing woman of God. But before she comes, I am just, uh, just elated to have also... My niece, you know, you own up to somebody who got it going on, right? My niece, sister, Tasha Page Lockhart. I want to tell you, thank you so much for blessing us today. Now, you know, many of you don't know that she is good stock from Greater Emmanuel. Yes, she, I'm telling you, she's a mighty woman of God. I'm so proud to see how she's blessing the world. And I'm telling you, weren't you blessed this morning to hear her take us through the worship? And I'm just thankful that she come to bless us today again. So before uh, our speaker comes, she's going to come at this time and bless us. Let's say amen for her. Praise the Lord, Great Emmanuel. I said, Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just glad to be in the house of the Lord. God is amazing. He's truly amazing. And to the leader of this house, Bishop J. Drew Sheard, in his absence, let's clap our hands for him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And to the fragrance of this house, I've always wanted to say that. <laughs> Dr. First Lady Karen Clark said, I love you so much. Thank you so much for having me. To Evangelist Kelly, she prayed uh, an awesome, powerful prayer. To all of the beautiful men and women of God, hallelujah. To the woman of God that's going to bring the word, I'm looking forward to hearing the word. I think I saw your thing was I survived it. I survived. I, I, listen, I'm not here to preach, but I could go on and on and on and on about things that I've survived. Hallelujah. There is a confidence that comes along with survival. When you know who God is and he's become real to you and you've seen him in those moments where you didn't have time to call your mother, but you had to call on the name of Jesus for yourself and he came through just like that. Hallelujah. People will walk away from you. People will act fickle and funny, but God never changes. He's always there and he's always the same. Hallelujah. When I'm on the mountain, he is there. And when I'm in the valley, he is there. And when I feel like giving up and 
throwing in the towel. Ooh, he is there. He, yeah, he is there. So one thing I know is he will never change. He remains the same. No, he will never change. One thing I know is, oh, 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 he will never change. He remains the same. No, he will never change. Because when I'm on the mountain, he is there. And when I'm in the valley, And when I feel like giving up and throwing in the towel, oh, he is there. He, yeah, he is there. So one thing I know is he will never change, he remains the same, no, he will never change, one thing I know is, oh, he will never change, he remains the same, no, he will never change, people One thing I know, I know for sure is that he will be there and he cares and he will know. No, he will never change. People will come and, oh, yes, they will. People, they will go. But one thing I know, I know for sure is that he will. One thing I know is he will never change. He remains the same. No, he will never
Hallelujah. Come on, slip those hands in the atmosphere for a God that will never change. Somebody wrote a song with the words, Jesus the same yesterday, today and forevermore. And we thank you, God. Come on. Don't miss the moment. And we thank you, God. It's something about telling God thank you. It's something about telling somebody thank you because wrapped in the words thank you means do it again. I said wrapped in the words thank you means do it again. It's a compliment, so tell him thank you that you are God that won't change. Hallelujah. So God, we honor you and we praise you. Hallelujah. Thank you for this word from this woman of God that you are God that won't change. Hallelujah. So we bless you now like we've been blessing you already. We add to it. We give you another thank you. This one is in advance for what you are going to do. Hallelujah. Not a past thank you, but for what you are going to do sit on this house today throw your weight around in greater Emmanuel somebody needs you some came for form and fashion because this is this is what we do on Sunday some came because hallelujah they're hoping that today might be their day this moment might be their moment Hallelujah. Thank you for not changing. Thank you, God, that you're not moving by a clock or a date on the calendar. Hallelujah. So we give you praise in advance for what you are going to do. So open now our ears that we may hear what the Spirit will say to the church. Hallelujah. Open our ears that we will hear what your spirit will say to these, your children. In the name of Jesus, we praise. In the name of Jesus, we praise. In the name of Jesus, we praise. There it is. Come on. In the name of Jesus, we praise. In the name of the Lord Jesus, we praise. And the redeemed saints of God say amen. Amen. You may take your seats. Hallelujah. I'm excited to be in. This is my little bottle of oil. I'll keep this one. Amen. That lady done. Where she go? Done sang so much. I done pulled my oil out, my grease out my pocketbook. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so excited to be here today in this house. Amen. To share with you the people of the Lord. Don't have any games. Don't have any rhymes. Don't have any rhetorics. Didn't come to collect an offering. I came to stand in the place, hallelujah, to help my sisters and my brothers on this side get a lifting. Hallelujah. To be reminded of some things that some of us have forgotten. And so that's why I'm here today. Amen. Let's do protocol. Amen. You've said it, but I haven't, so I will. Amen. I want to give honor to... I was thinking about this while I was writing these words. He really is the greatest bishop in the whole entire world. I'll wait for you. Somebody say literally. Come on. I said he's the greatest bishop in the whole entire world. Hallelujah. Amen. Bishop J. Drew Shit. Sit, sit, sit. Amen. Hallelujah. We honor him. This isn't buy one, get one free. <laughs> Tell somebody this is not no bogo. You don't buy one and get one free. Amen. Amen. We thank God for him and we honor him. I love him. My husband loves him. My daughter loves him. Amen. We love him. He's a great man of God. And he's proof that God is good. He's proof that God is faithful. And so we celebrate him even in his absence, our chief apostle. Amen. We celebrate him. Amen. And to my beautiful sister and my friend, the one and only evangelist, Karen Clark. 
cheer. I love you. Amen. I am so honored to call her uh, my sister and my friend. Amen. I know people say that a lot of times when they are doing introductions, but I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. She really is my sister and my friend. Amen. And I don't take for granted to have this awesome opportunity to be here to love on her daughters. Come on. Amen. In this capacity. I want to say God bless you to my other girl. Amen. Dr. Dorinda Clark Cole, the host of this conference. We miss you. Amen. And to Supervisor Jackie Chisholm, that's my buddy. <laughs> she brings me candy to church. Okay. Amen. To Jackie, amen. In her absence today, amen. We thank God for you. Amen. To my, my girl, Supervisor Tiffany Lewis. Amen. God bless you, sweetheart. Amen. This one will come see about you. You tell her you got a problem, she'll get on a plane and come, come see about you. And I'm so grateful to have had the occasion to meet her when we did, to be together and connected in this time. Amen. And to all of my other lovelies, amen. Kiki, amen. Love you so much. J. Drew, amen. Love you so much. Amen. To all of you whose name I may not know to call today, I love you with the love of the Lord. My sisters and brothers, keep living right and I'll get to see you in heaven. Amen. Amen. To my one and only biological daughter, uh, Miss Rachel, Miss Rachel Victoria, who's here with me today. Amen. Mama, love you. I don't know where she is. Where are you? Okay. Amen. Mama, love you. My only begotten. Amen. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad. I don't want to call her last name because she is the newlywed. So she's not a Kershaw anymore, at least except on her birth certificate. Amen. She went and got her a husband. Amen. Praise the Lord. Come on, stand up, daughter, and wave at the people. Somebody want a husband. Amen. Where Aisha at? Amen. Where's Aisha? Amen. Where's Aisha? She drove us. Where's Aisha? Where's she? Amen. Yes, yeah, some people want a husband. Wave at her, Pookie. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. She didn't tell me that. Amen. The Lord told me. Amen. She didn't tell me that. The Lord told me when you picked us up in the van today, uh, yesterday. Amen. And to my husband, amen, the Bishop Keith A. Kersher. I'm giving you all a moment, amen, to see that my dress match, amen, I got on purple. Come on, y'all don't know nothing about me. I'm trying to let you see that I got my colors on, amen. Amen. So I'm going through this list here while you check me out, amen. Praise the Lord, amen. I got my nails done purple. I'm, I'm ready. I'm in on it. Amen. I'm giving my offering. Amen. The royal seed. I got all of that down pack. Amen. But you don't know me, so you're looking to find out if I got if I can really do what I'm doing. Amen. So I'm gonna give you a chance to do that. Amen. Praise the Lord, because we gotta go on a journey. Amen. To my husband, my bishop, Bishop Keith A. Kersher. I call him my honey bishop. Amen. A man of God that I admire and I love so much. And to my church family, by now they're probably online watching. Um, Lady Kay loves you with the love of the Lord. Amen. I've just come to teach my Sunday school lesson. Amen. I don't, I don't uh, claim to be a great this or a great that. I just teach Sunday school. Amen. Praise the Lord. So all of the men of the Lord who are here today in celebration with the women, thank you for coming. Thank you for showing up. Amen. I got something to tell you. Everybody got a mama. I'm going to give you a moment. Amen. So, men, thank you for being here. Amen. You don't believe me? Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody put your hand on your navel and say, I was attached. You got a mama now. You might not have no daddy or know who he is, but you had a mama. Somebody look at your navel and say, I was attached. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Not the lesson today. I'm going to teach my Sunday school lesson and soon get out of your way. And to our sister, amen, we love Mother Bogan. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us um, today. Amen. Let's go briefly. I know that you have a theme scripture, and I'm going to hit it. But I want to introduce to you another portion of scripture out of Genesis chapter 18. The story that I'm going to teach the lesson from today um, comes, amen, from a very familiar passage of scripture. 
out of Genesis chapter 18, verses 1 through 15. I'm not going to read all of them, but they will be our reference scriptures today. Can I talk? I want to start at verse number 9. But the Bible says, you got it? Come on. The Bible says, and they said unto him, where is Sarah thy wife? And he said, behold, in the tent. And he said, I will certainly return unto thee according to the time of life. And lo, Sarah, thy wife, shall have a son. And Sarah heard it in the tent door, which was behind him. Can I read? Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well stricken in age. And it ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. Therefore Sarah laughed within herself, saying, After I'm wax old, shall I have pleasure? My Lord being old also. And the Lord said unto Abraham, Wherefore did Sarah laugh, saying, Shall I of a surety bear a child which am old? Is anything too hard for the Lord? At the time appointed, I will return unto thee according to the time of life, and Sarah shall have a son. Verse 15, then Sarah denied, saying, I laughed not, for she was afraid. And he said, nay, but thou didst laugh. Is that in your Bible? Look at somebody while you're taking your seat and say, God's going to make you laugh. Come on, find somebody that, that's not on your road, but somewhere in the church that's not looking at you. Find them and get eye contact with them and say, God's going to make you laugh. I know we got a whole long list of impossibilities, of reasons why it's not going to work this time. But let me help you understand that God is going to make you laugh. Laughter. Can I teach my lesson? Laughter is defined as the action of a noise produced by laughing. The experience or manifestation of mirth, amusement, scorn, or joy. Somebody say laughter. Yeah. Laughter is the most often and likely reflects only positive emotional states of joy or happiness. But it can also result from emotional states of, listen, embarrassment or confusion. Can I teach? I've only um, come today in my study to let you know that laughing is not just a tickle, tickle moment. But there are five types of laughter. I'm going somewhere. You have a genuine laughter, which would be your spontaneous laugh. You have a self-induced laugh. Laughter, which is simulated. That's the copycat laugh. You know, when you laughed and somebody else just laughed. They don't even know what they're laughing about. Then there's the stimulated laugh, which is the tickling kind. And then there is the induced kind, which happens as a result of drugs. And then there is pathological. Can I teach? Current literature on laughter is promising, though. It suggests that laughter has many positive psychological effects on the body. I know it's true because in your Bible is a scripture in Proverbs 17 and 22. Who's listening? Say, I'm listening. The Bible says in Proverbs 17 and 22 that laughter is a medicine. I'm teaching my lesson. I want to introduce to you today even a third definition of laughter. 
I found out that this long-standing explanation finds where most survivors and survive hers are, hallelujah, is that this, this issue of humor or laughter breeds incongruity. This might be a better definition to explain where most of us dwell because people laugh at the juxtaposition of being incompatible um, these concepts when we say God is going to do something for you, but he hadn't done it. It's the incongruity between expectations and reality. This variance and this theory of laughing brings about this resolution where people discover an unexpected solution to this inconsistency that God keeps bringing us to this point about what he is going to do. It almost seems like God is running a double standard. You tell me something, you show me something, only for me to get to the end of the something and I got nothing in return. Can I teach my lesson? Somebody prophesying here, God is going to make you laugh. How many times have you been told or heard or overheard a word that's preached, a promise that you believed that was yours, but you are still waiting? Some of you find yourselves embarrassed or confused because you have all of the symptoms that say this time it's going to work. Can I teach my lesson? Or yes, Tiffany, they'll call you for an interview and they'll love, hallelujah, that the interview was good and then they hire somebody else internally. Can I teach? You do all of the math, hallelujah, it's working in your favor, and you are destined to win. All the votes are in, and it's supposed to go in your favor, only to discover you lost. You see the house that you want to live in, you see the car, I'm trying to teach my lesson, that's it. You see the car that you want to drive, hallelujah, but you look at your account, and it's in the negative. Some of you are just waiting, just looking, like somebody waiting on a bus. You lean in, because at least you know at some point, I'm teaching right through here, the bus is coming. It's came every other day of the week. It's came at every other time of the month. So surely, mm -hmm, the bus is going to come, only to Discover you on the right route, you're on time, waiting for the bus to come, and the bus pulls up, and for some reason, on this one day, it's not your bus. I can't talk to nobody today. And I've come to snatch some of you survivors and survive hers. I'm teaching I want to snatch you in the neck today because my assignment is to diagnose where we are. Not just in GEI, but in Christendom. Mm -hmm. we, we are just learning that we can survive. Mm -hmm. we, we're just making it, but we don't walk into the elevated truth that God is going to do what he said. Mm -hmm. Glory to God, I'm here to tell you today that this diagnosis that I've come to pronounce over you actually lands in verse uh, 14 of the chapter 18 that we just read. It comes in the form of this question, is there anything too hard for God? Survive hers, start to believe this in their spirit that maybe what I'm going through is too hard for God. It's not a comfortable place to be in because we have been asked to walk by faith and not by sight. But my eyesight seems to be doing a better job than my faith walking. Talk, Kershaw. Mm -hmm. It's hard. It's, it's almost embarrassing uh -huh, to, to say out loud that God made me a promise that he don't intend to make good on. 
Somebody say, sounds like blasphemy. But what do you do when God's promise is the problem? I said, what do you do when the promise that God gave to you is the problem? Can I teach my lesson? You're holding on to a promise that seems to be overdue. It seems like if God don't do it this week, I'm going to run out of time. It's going to expire. Oh, the woman of God sang about the testimony, and I wrote this on my paper before you sang it. Hallelujah. Many of us got more tests than moaning. They, hallelujah, glory to God. They call for a testimony service, and you should be jumping up, but you can't because all you got on your list to report is tests. You ain't got no moaning. Tell somebody, I ain't got no moaning. Because God hadn't done what he said he was going to do yet. Somebody say yet. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today, glory to God. It, let me ask this question. Are there any doctors in the house? Anybody that's in the medical profession, a doctor, any, any doctors? Nobody besides me? Amen? Raise your hand if you are. Raise your hand. Anybody? Amen? Okay, because I want to talk to you in medical terms for a minute. Amen. Let me tell you. When you work in a particular field, the semantics has to change, all right? I'm asking about the medical field because I just read to you the scripture where the Bible says laughter is like a medicine. I hope you didn't miss that. This diagnosis today occurs on this very day. I can't do anything about what you were promised by other evangelists and other prophets and other teachers and other people that are close to you in your life. I don't have nothing to do with that. All I know is that I'm here to proclaim over this house today. I'm here to let you know that God is going to make you laugh. Can I teach? The diagnosis occurs so it can help the doctor determine or detect the discovery of the disease. However, the prognosis is the prediction or the prophecy of what is to come concerning the progression of the disease and its outcome. Somebody say, I'm listening. It's the pulse visit. It what, it's what happens after you got the di direction from the doctor of what you've been diagnosed with. Can I teach? I found out that prognosis comes from a Greek word means to know before. And this is where a lot of the survivors get caught up because we want to know in advance what God is going to do. Don't make me a promise and then it's 15 years later and I'm still not healed. Don't make me a promise and it's 15 years later, and I'm still not married. Don't make me a promise, hallelujah, and it's 15 years later, and I still got an issue in my body after you promised me that you were going to heal me. Oh, I've heard it over and over. By his stripes, we are healed, and you're still taking medicine. Mm -hmm. So when the prognosis comes, when the prophet comes, the prophetess comes through, hallelujah, they are trying to help you level up. Somebody say level up. Level up that there is a chance of recovery. I've come today to stop you from having relapse. I've come today to help you from falling off the bandwagon every time. You get through a day and it seems like it's not coming to pass. Hallelujah. I've come to stop the enemy mm -hmm, that pokes at you at night mm -hmm, when nobody is there and there is no organ and there is no evangelist to, hallelujah, to encourage you, hallelujah. They don't think that you cry or that you worry. They don't think that you have no problems. So you have to do all of what you go through at night, hallelujah, while you're laying in the bed. I've come to stop, I've come to stop the relapse. When I do that, that means I'm enjoying my own self, amen. You don't have to clap, you don't have to say, 
You don't have to say amen. I say when I do that, I'm enjoying my own cooking. Hallelujah. I'm here to stop the relapse. I'm here to stop the women, the survivors mm -hmm, from falling away, from falling by the wayside. I don't have time to teach you today. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you, we weren't built that way. Mm -hmm. We weren't built to fall off the bandwagon, women of God. I can't deal with the men today. I got a book coming out. You can read it. Hallelujah. Them jokers was made from dust. They, they was made from dust, but we was made from bone. This ain't no man bashing this in your Bible. Come on, read your, look at somebody say, read your Bible. They, they made from dust, and not only dust, but they was asleep. And the Bible doesn't tell us how long he was asleep. Hallelujah. Well, I ain't got time to deal with it today. But they made from dust, we made from bone. And even though bone, hallelujah, is strong, it would seem like we would be easy to be broken. But bone has elasticity. At best you can do is bend me. But please, somebody say, tell hell about it. Tell hell, come on, tell, tell the demons, take this back to hell. At best you can bend me, but you will never, come on. You will, come on, survivors. You will never be able to break me. Clap your hands and say, God is going to make me laugh. Sit, sit, sit. I'm almost done. So I'm here today to tell you today I don't have time. Hallelujah. It also means come against the complications and the hiccups that you're having while you wait on God to do a tickle tickle in your life. Hallelujah. Who's listening? Say I'm listening. Laughter also is a way to communicate. You're not going to miss this. Survival. And when you get to the end of the rope and you run out of tears, come on, just say, after you done ran out of tears, hallelujah, all you got left is the laugh, because it don't go there, but you short on tears. You, you short on worry. Mm -hmm. So all you got left is to laugh about it, because what's the use? What's the point in crying? That don't work. You just start laughing like, really, this would be doing? Can I teach my lesson? It's in the Bible. So the Bible, the Bible, the Bible asks this question, is there anything too hard for God? Hurry up, Kershaw. But I discovered in my study, Lady Karen, that this didn't start in chapter 18 where we read in where Sarah is laughing. Mm -hmm. It actually, you got to read your Sunday school, hallelujah, your Sunday school lesson, read your Bible. It actually starts in chapter 17 with Abram laughing. Can I teach my lesson? The Bible says that God makes covenant with Abram. He makes a covenant that he's going to bless the land. Mm -hmm. He's going to bless his descendants, hallelujah. He's going to be such a blessing that he will be able to bless his descendants. Not only is he going to have them, but he would become a blesser of his descendants. Somebody say descendants. Descendants are not a son. I don't have time to walk you through it. You got to catch it while I'm going. I said descendant is not a son. He told him that he was going to bless him, hallelujah, through all the nations. Can I teach? Hallelujah. Abram was blessed everywhere, Kiki, the sole of his foot touched. Mm -hmm. I believe that Abram was good with that. Hallelujah. He was good with the covenant that everywhere my feet tread, God is going to bless me. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 17, God changes Abram's name to Abraham. Mm -hmm. But notice this, 10 verses later, he changes Sarai's name from Sarai to Sarah. Can I teach? Mm -hmm. God says, hallelujah, in verse number 15, God said to Abram, as for Sarai, your wife, you will no longer, Sar Sarai, your wife, you will no longer call her Sarai. Mm -hmm. You will call her Sarah. Read your book, Kershaw. Verse 16 says, I will bless her. This God talking to Abram. 
about Sarah. Read your lesson. He says, I'm going to bless her so that she will be the mother of nations. She will be kings of people. Mm -hmm. They will come from her. How is this possible? We're not talking about Sarah. We're talking about Abram being blessed with covenant. Don't have time. Verse 17 says, hallelujah, Abram fell face down mm -hmm. and he laughed and said to himself, will a son be born to a man a hundred years old? Mm -hmm. Will Sarah bear a child at the age of 90 years old? Mm -hmm. Verse 19 says, then God said, yes, your wife Sarah, not your servant, but your wife Sarah, that's a whole nother lesson, mm -hmm, will bear your son. And yes, we will call his name Isaac. And by the way, Isaac means laughter. Hallelujah. So let's go back to our scripture. Somebody say she didn't forget. Hallelujah. Somebody say she didn't forget. Hallelujah. Verse number nine opens up in chapter 18. Hallelujah. Which leads me to consider all your brothers, your scholars can teach it and learn and help us understand if I got it wrong. But I got a little tied up right through here because verse nine in chapter 18 led me, Sister Karen, to consider the fact that Abram never told Sarai about the promise. Abram probably forgot, and he forgot because, remember, he's being blessed, and every place his foot tread is fertile. So no need to deal with a barren wife when you are fertile. I'm here to tell you today, hallelujah, Abram, I don't think, hallelujah, was concerned about the barrenness of Sarah because he was working in covenant blessing. I'm here to tell you today that your age isn't the problem. Somebody say, put a pin. When I tell you to put a pin, that means I'm coming off script for a minute. I got to tell you something and I'm coming right back. Somebody say, put a pin. Abram wasn't concerned about his age when he was knocking up Hagar. He wasn't concerned about, y'all don't like my teaching. He wasn't concerned about his body parts and where he parked his car when he was dealing with Hagar. I got nobody talking. I don't have time to teach you today. Invite me back to a closed room and I can tell you what I'm talking about. Stop parking your car in other people's garages. I don't care what he driving. Ah! I don't care if it's a Pinto or a Mercedes or a Porsche. Stop letting these park in your garage. I don't have time to deal with it today, hallelujah. I had to hold on to the thought, hallelujah. Move your pen, come on. I had to hold on to the thought that this joker walking around blessed, hallelujah. And the scripture says that you're going to have a son by your wife. I, I don't care how many women get pregnant. I don't care how many babies you get from somebody else, but tell somebody, this one for me, hallelujah. God's going to make me laugh, hallelujah. I'm not fitting to borrow your promise. I'm not fitting to copy your promise. God said he's going to tickle, tickle me. Come on, somebody. It's a teacher lesson, Kershaw. Stay on and read your paper. Somebody said read your paper. Hallelujah. Sarah gave, gave her husband to her servant because she was barren and she... She did do that, and, and I, I got stuck there in all of my teaching until this lesson. Hallelujah. She got stuck there. It was right for her to offer her servant to her husband. Remember now, there is an outstanding covenant at work because women of old time were looking forward to the Messiah. So it was actually a curse when you were barren and couldn't bear. Every, 
I ain't got time to talk to y'all. Everybody, let me talk to the singing lady. Hallelujah. Everybody wanted to be the one to give birth to the Messiah. So, 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 so we can hold on to the heritage of, 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 of Abraham. Come on, you got to watch this, you got to watch the show. If you want to be of Abraham, then Abraham got to be able to have a son. Hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today, I don't think that he told her, I haven't lost where I am. I said I don't think that he told her because this is not in this story the first visitation. This is not Abram's first time hearing about Sarah, hallelujah, having a son. Remember, I read it to you in chapter 17. And he laughed. Come on, somebody. I'm here to tell you today that survivor Sarah, hallelujah, she presents with this right here. Get ready. Bless you. If you don't praise him right through here, we might as well have a seat. Presents with, listen, a promise that was given to her husband, that could only be carried out in her. I said, this is how you know when God, you know, he, he, he be acting kind of funny sometimes. But this is how you know when God is getting ready to make you laugh. When you put the promise in somebody else. But it's actually for me. You give somebody else the job. Ah! But it's actually for me. Come on. You put my promise in the heart of somebody that ain't even in my nationality. But you really meant it for me. You let me watch it happening to other people on TV. Ah! But it's actually for me. You let me go to the baby shower of everybody else having a baby, hallelujah, when you know, hallelujah, God is going to bless your womb. Can I teach? I said God is allowing your promise to be seen over there. Mm -hmm. And he's laughing, hallelujah, but tickle, tickle, sir, ain't nothing getting ready to happen for you until you lay with me. Clap your hands and say, God, clap your hands, clap your hands and prophesy in this house. Look at somebody and say, God's going to make you laugh. I'm almost done. Hallelujah. So God gave, sit, sit, sit. God put her promise in the heart of a husband. But he said, yes, it's going to come only through your wife, Sarah. You know that he's going to make you laugh, hallelujah, and that you're moving to survive her status. I'm moving, come on. When you see, hallelujah, your promise over there and not over here. How do you know, Sister Kershaw, somebody says she got Bible. This is the second visitation in our lesson. We're going to dance in just a minute, hallelujah, and give an offering, hallelujah, because there's no way you can receive a word from God and not be a blessing. Mm -hmm. You can't see him when he blesses you, and you can't see him when you pay this money. You're going to have to get his offering. That's the best we can do, hallelujah. So get yourself together, hallelujah. I'm here to tell you today that, hallelujah, Sarah, hallelujah, got sent to the other tent. Abram, read your Bible. You got to read verses 1, hallelujah, through verse 9. Company stopped by, and Abram couldn't remember to tell her the promise, but he told her to go to the kitchen and get these brothers some food. Somebody said, I got more than that to give. <laughs> ah! I got more than that to give you, Reverend, hallelujah. Oh, yes, I'm a cook, hallelujah. Come on, I done lied for you. You know I can fix a dent. I'm sorry. You, you, done, you done asked me to lie for you, holler, to lay in another man's bed. Listen, who couldn't get me pregnant because, hallelujah, God bust up the lie because that's not where the promise is supposed to land. Hallelujah. I'm teaching so hard in this church. Hallelujah. So, 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 I done lied for you. So, when he sent her to the kitchen to cook, there was no problem because the Bible tells us, the Bible tells us that Sarah called Abraham Lord. 
So him telling me what to do ain't a problem. It's a marriage class, but I can't do it today. Hallelujah. You hear this, Talia? Glory to God. She was in the tent next door. And here we are. Hallelujah. Sarah, when he heard, she heard the man, the angel of the Lord, I believe, said to Abraham, because now they know that he didn't tell her either. Where is Sarah? It's time to bring this promise to pass. Where is Sarah? I already told you in an earlier chapter, and apparently she ain't walking around knocked up, so she must be don't even know. Amen. You laying eggs. Oh, excuse me. Eggs. <laughs> Hallelujah. Read your paper, Kershaw. You sleep with other people, and it's good for you. It feels good to you. <laughs> don't nobody like me, but it ain't the promise. And it's time now for the promise to come to pass. Hallelujah. Where is Sarah? Where is Karen? Come on. Where is Tiffany? Come on. Where is Maxine? I can't get nobody to talk to me. Come on, put your name in it. Where is? Now this time, you're going to make no mistake that I'm talking to you. I'm not just talking about you. Come on. I'm talking directly to you. Where is Sarah? Glory to God. And Sarah heard her name like we do when uh, my husbands are talking about us. You tap in. Hallelujah. What did he say? And Sarah overheard the man. I'm hurrying. Hallelujah. Overheard the man tell him that Sarah is going to have a baby. Hallelujah. She's going to have a son. Hallelujah. And she does where our lesson lands today. She laughs. And she laughs, I thought, because at first she was just being cynical. Hallelujah. She laughed, hallelujah, because she started to do what many of you do. She started to add up all the don'ts, hallelujah, that will never get her to a do. Mm -hmm. She started adding up on her list, I'm old, hallelujah. I don't ovulate anymore, hallelujah. At best, I might be able to have pleasure. Come on, put a pen. Somebody say, put a pen. Just because you're too old, hallelujah, in your mind to get pregnant is not the same promise as being too old to have pleasure. Somebody said that's two different prognoses. I need some help in this church. I said I need some help in this church. Oh, hallelujah. Survivors, I'm here to tell you that God is going to make you laugh. Some of you have become tickled at the thought that can God do this for me? Can God make this happen in me? So she laughs. Hallelujah. The Bible goes on to say, hallelujah, that the angel, hallelujah, the men, of God addressed her hallelujah after she said I didn't laugh hallelujah no because put a pen somebody say put a pen you remember Adam had a covenant on his life mm -hmm. he was supposed to call the animals by their name before he got to work it in the garden his assignment was to name every animal what they would be called I can't get nobody to help me today. And so men of God who are descendants of the Abrahamic covenant, mm -hmm, that same calling is on your life. So you have to be careful when you call me out of my name. When you call me something internally, I don't want to receive it, but I got the can't help it because I'm working, hallelujah, against the anointing that falls on your life. So men of God, I want you to be careful what you are speaking over your woman of God. Mm -hmm. Be careful when you tell her she didn't do it good because she'll never be able to get it right until you change what you say. Mm -hmm. She'll never be able to stop being afraid until you speak to her mm -hmm. and tell her there is no need for you to fear. Can I teach? Mm -hmm. I'm here to tell you today that Sarah... 
was afraid. Uh -huh. She felt a little fearful in her heart because she laughed. And this man of God checked her and said, why are you laughing? Hallelujah. So her response, because the seed of lying was already planted in her. It worked when he told me to lie. Ah! So surely it's going to work now when I tell them. Oh, my, my, say, hallelujah, that I didn't laugh. Uh huh. And so the man of God says to her, you did laugh. Somebody say funny, not funny. Hallelujah, glory to God. Come on, Kershaw. It seems to be overdue. It seems like what you've been waiting on is about to expire. Mm -hmm. You don't have a testimony to give. You're just waiting on God. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you today, uh huh, you got to keep reading your Bible. Mm -hmm. Because the word of the Lord declares, hallelujah, in Genesis chapter 21, verses 1 through 6, mm -hmm, that the Lord graciously remembered uh -huh, and visited Sarah as he said. Mm -hmm, and the Lord did to her as he had promised. Come on. Uh -huh. Somebody say, God made her laugh. Mm -hmm. So Sarah conceived and gave birth to a son for Abraham uh -huh, in his old age at the appointed time of which God has spoken to him. Mm -hmm. Abraham named his son Isaac, hallelujah, the son that Sarah gave to him. Even though he was still asking God, can you bless Ishmael? Because now his manhood is threatened. I already got a son. Can you just bless him? God says, I'm going to bless him, but this one got to come through Sarah. Somebody say, until Sarah delivers. Somebody open your mouth and say your name until Maxine delivers. You can get everything else for the law you want, but until Maxine brings forth, ain't nothing going to change. Can I teach my lesson? So Sarah, somebody help me preach right through, oh, excuse me, teach right through here. Sarah said that God has made me laugh. And when everybody else, Else. Come on, wave your hand over the congregation. When y'all hear about it, you're going to know too that God made me laugh. You sitting there wondering, how am I going to be able to get on the Grammys? Wow! How am I going to be able to get notoriety? How am I going to be able to bring forth a baby when I'm barren? Somebody say, God is getting ready to make you laugh. I'm here to tell you today, glory to God, that God says, even though you've been watching your promise, the day is the day that we're going to make it. We're going to seal the deal. It's going to come to pass. You wait and see. God is going to do what he promised you he was going to do. I'm here to tell you, you're not too old. You're not too young. You're not too fat. Come on. You're not too skinny. Come on. I'm lifting these things up off of you. You're not, hallelujah, in the wrong church. Oh, you're not in the wrong denomination. You're not, hallelujah, on the wrong board. I said, God is going to make you laugh. Clap your hands. Say, I got a promise. And God is getting ready to make me laugh. Somebody open your mouth and scream and say, I got a promise. So we're getting ready to praise right through here. Prophesy to your feet. Say, feet don't fail me now. Because I got to put a praise on it. Hallelujah, glory to God. Because seeds are no good on top of the ground. In order for a seed to burst open, you got to get it in the soil. Oh, Lord, I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to tell you today that God says, I'm going to send you into a laughing fit. Even though your neighbor didn't believe you when you testified that God was going to give you a new job. 
God getting ready to make you laugh. <laughs> oh, Lord, <laughs> even though your neighbor <laughs> didn't believe when you said, <laughs> I'm getting ready to get married, <laughs> God <laughs> is getting ready <laughs> to make you laugh. I'm here to tell you today, it's not because you deserve it, but because God want to make his name great, and he wants you to partner with him in the earth. Can I teach my lesson? I'm here to tell you today, I want you to encourage your sister. I want you to encourage your brother. You got to take your medicine. You got to take your medicine. Sometimes you got to take it before breakfast. Sometimes you got to take it with food. Sometimes you got to take it twice a day. Sometimes you got to take it late at night. But not taking it is not an option because the God that would do hard things has visited GEI today. Clap your hands and say, take your medicine. I'm here to tell you, yes, you survived. Hallelujah, glory to God. But surviving is just only one stop. You can't stop at just surviving. You got to get to a place that's called it is finished. You got to get to a place of amen. I heard the woman of God pray. You got to give him a praise that say it's done. Now when your eyes can't see it, hallelujah, glory to God. You start prophesying to other body parts. You prophesy to your hand. Hallelujah, I'm laughing. You prophesy to your feet. That means I'm laughing. You prophesy to your heart. That means I'm laughing. Do I have anybody in the building that knows enough is enough? I don't care how many Hagar's got pregnant. Enough is enough. Today is the day that God is going to make me laugh. You've been waiting on a blessing that seems it just won't come. God says, I'm going to make you laugh. Clap your hands. Open your mouth. said open your mouth and say God come on Aisha God is gonna make me laugh I don't care if you don't have nobody you don't have a candidate God says I'm gonna make you laugh you did all the work on your own yes you trusted me yes you asked me but it's now time that they see that this isn't a hard thing for me glory to God I'm getting ready like Sarah let everybody that look into your life let them declare God made her laugh so you don't even have to tell it when you see me some of y'all trying to figure out why am I the one preaching at GEI because God funny acting hallelujah and this is his way to let me know I got you don't you worry about an invitation which I don't hallelujah but I'm gonna make you laugh I'm gonna set you in good company oh Lord Lord, I got to turn my back on y'all because ain't nobody shouting and I feel like dancing. I got to turn my back. Oh Lord, because I feel like God will let you see it before you see it. Ow! So the fast part is that when you see yourself in the company of great men and great women, tell somebody I'm seeing what God going to have me laughing about. You don't need to be discouraged. Let me go on this side of the church. You, don't, you got me? You don't need to be discouraged about where you are because this is the beginning. How do you know Kershaw? Because God said, I'm waiting for some hand lifters. Hallelujah, glory to God. God said,
says, I'm going to give you the desires of your heart. Though he slay me, though he slay me, though he slay me, yet, yet, will I trust him. God says, my thoughts toward you are good. They are not evil. So I'm going to get you to your expected end. Don't worry about it. You're on the way. How many people seen? How many people heard a promise that God gave to them? Clap your hands. If you believe it, I got to sit down because we got to get this offering. I said, if you believe it, that your promise has not spoiled. I said, it has not spoiled. I don't care if you're 90 years old. I don't care if you're 13 years old. It has not spoiled. I can't pray for all of you today. That's why I'm asking you to just connect as touching and agreeing. Hallelujah, that I believe. I believe God that his promise over my life, it shall come to pass. Now you do know that a promise that you're hoping for is a different praise than a shall praise. I came here today that if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, how many of you got to, if it had not been, praise on your lips how many of you got it if it had not been on your lips i need you to give god about a 30 second praise do it now come on prophesy to your feet Prophesy to your feet and say, God is going to make you laugh. Come on, we got about 20 more seconds. Come on, brothers. God is going to make you laugh. How you going to have me see it? Give it to me. Tell somebody, God is going to make you laugh. God is going to make you laugh. That's it, mother.
has come to your house today. Prophesy to your neighbor, God gonna make me laugh. I know I've been telling you what God said he was gonna do, but today is the day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, slip those hands up. How many of you believe that God is going to do what he said he's going to do? One time God spoke to me about something that seemed impossible. And I was so jacked up. Tiffy, I was so jacked up, I just... It's hard to believe when you don't believe what the, what the promise really is. And so God said to me, come on, hands up. He said, I said, God, this is impossible. He said, read it. What? He said, read it. He said, and read it slow. So I started out. I said, I, he said, stop. I said, M, he said, stop. 
Now he said, read the sentence. What you call an impossible reads for him, I am possible. I said, God gave me that. I didn't make it up. Come on, hands up. Hallelujah. So I come to snatch you from that place of relapse. This ain't just a good service. Watch what I tell you. Some promises you got in a box back in the corner of the closet. You might as well get them out because God getting ready to make you laugh. That son that you want to save, that is a hellion. That daughter that's selling her body parts on the street. That cousin that's tied up with drugs. And be in and out of jail every other week. I ain't talking about your family because I don't know you. I'm talking about what I know. Then go on and try to have an operation to get rid of their original parts. Because your feelings got you thinking that you a boy when you was a girl. Put a pen, somebody said, here she go again. If you didn't come here with a bat and two small balls, you was not a boy. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to turn my back. I'm not going to look at you because I'm not talking about yours. I said if you didn't come here with a bat and two small boys, you was not a boy. So you can stop having surgery. You can stop buying stuff out the Chinese store. You can go from a B cup to a double D to a triple C to a G. Lord, have mercy. We got all the alphabets working for us. Somebody say you is not a girl. You can snatch your waist into a 16 and your hips can be a 45. You is not a girl. Come on, hands lifted. I know you're tired. Hallelujah. But I'm here to tell you today that God is going to make you laugh. Baby girl, I don't know. I can't sing like you. Hallelujah. But I'm getting on that choir in heaven. I'm not, I don't want to be on that make a joyful noise one. I want to be on the one with all the parts is right. I know this is not going to make sense. This is right before we get ready to give. This is not going to make sense because it's about deodorant. There's a deodorant called Sure. You put it on to keep you from being stink. So when you lift your hands, nobody know what you got going on. Nobody know that you didn't wash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hands up. This is my prayer. And then we want you to get you an offering. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. If you're sure, I can't sing it like Karen and my sister. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, you believe that God gonna make you laugh. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Oh, raise your hand. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're sure. Come on, survivors. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on, this is the prayer. Raise your hand. Hey. Raise your hand. you to get an offering in your hand. Thank you, Jesus. I know you've given. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. If you put it on your album, I want you to put my name in small print. 
And when you do this here with the mic right here, Karen, I want you to put my name down at the bottom. God's going to make you laugh. Hallelujah. Come on, get an offering and stand to your feet as soon as you can. I'm done. Raise your hand. Come on, you might be given by Givelify. You might be online. Thank you for being with us today. I know you're hitting on the side of your computer laughing. Come on, it's going to work for you too. Come on, join in on one of these sources. If you don't have 20, 25, 50, you got something. Thank you, Jesus. The problem is not that you don't have the 20. The problem is that you have something and won't give it. I want you to get it in your hand. If you're given by digital platform, that's fine. Just hold your phone in your hand. Hallelujah. But the rest of you that are giving the tradition away, I don't know, we need a receptacle. We need someone that could come. Hallelujah. Raise your hand. And I want you to start walking this way. Come quickly. Raise your hand. I can't pray, and I'm not coming down there, because if I put my hand on you today, it ain't going to work out too good for us. It will be. Hallelujah. It's not fitting to work out too good. Oh, oh, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. Come on. Quick. Raise your hand. studio do something with this here raise your hand raise your hand Ooh. raise your hand oh raise your hand come on keep coming oh I want to pray oh I want to pray father thank you for your daughters oh father thank you for your son I can't stop relapse. I can't stop fall back. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Come on. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Yeah, 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 yeah. Raise your hand. Keep coming. If I were you, I would get in on it. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Woo! Raise your hand. Hey. Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Say the storm is over. Holy Ghost, say the storm is over now. The storm is over. I'm going to silence the voice of the enemy that keep causing you to have a relapse. So raise your hand. In the name of Jesus, I declare and decree. You're going to rest. Come on, walk like you shout. Walk to your seat like you're shouting. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm going to preach. Oh, excuse me. I'm going to teach better when I come. to just, uh, Sister Shekinah, would you just come and just, I want to say a word of prayer. 
for Mother Hamilton. And uh, if you stand for just a few minutes, I want to just, I believe God for miracles. How about you? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ah, the anointing is in this place. Oh, the woman of God has reminded us that there is a promise and somebody's going through a sickness right now, but God is going to make you laugh again. Hallelujah. The word was sent by the woman of God. The promise just may be your miracle. Hallelujah. Come in the front. Come right here. Come right here. I want you to just point your hands towards mother. If you can come just in, in, in advance, we're just going to praise God. Everybody point your hands. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are a miraculous, miracle-working God. And I pray right now, God, that you will come right now. God, we are expecting to see signs and wonders and miracles. We speak it right now. I pray, Lord, that the high blood pressure will be regulated in the name of Jesus. I rebuke any sickness and any disease. I plead the blood over the body right now. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. Touch right now. God, we thank you, Lord, for the promise that was made in the word of God. God. Hallelujah, when you sent your son, and oh, we are to be healed when by the stripes, oh, that your son Jesus had for us. God, I pray right now that you will touch the body right now. We claim healing, we speak healing, we decree healing. Oh, we declare it right now. Touch Sister Shekinah right now. Touch her body, Lord. I think right now that when she go back to the doctor, hallelujah, it will be amazed. God, we Thank you for the good news. Thank you for the promise. Yes, God, we decree it right now. You said all we had to do was have faith and believe. A size of a mustard seed, we believe that it is so. Say it and take your hands off God's people. Take your hands off. We rebuke sickness. We rebuke diseases. We claim our miracle. We claim our miracle. We're going to come out with our hands up in the name of Jesus. We're going to come out claiming our healing, God. We give you honor and we give you glory. And the people of the Lord shout out, it is well. And clap your hands and praise God if you believe it. It is well. Yeah, God, yeah, God, yeah, God. We believe in miracles. I said we believe in miracles. We believe work miracles. Some of y'all are still standing because you had a miracle performed in your life. You ought to be thankful. Hey, glory to God. You better praise God in advance. Hallelujah. For what he's doing. It is so. It is so. We claim it done in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. Oh, do I have some praises in the room that know how to put a praise on it? And know how to put a praise on it. I guarantee you, if you praise God for them, God will work a miracle for you. If you praise God in his house, he's going to go to your house. Come on and give God glory. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I just need you to put it in the atmosphere. Put around in your road. Just wave your hand down the road and say, my problems is on this road. It's coming to this road. It's coming to this road. It's coming to my life. It's coming in my mind. The promise is coming. Hallelujah. Take your seat. God bless you. Glory to God. Everything. You know, many times, talking about being a survivor that's our testimony is that we have survived some things most of us been through some fire when the devil expected us to check out and not keep it moving but God got some girls up in here today that said I'm gonna be unmovable and unstoppable because my promise is here today come on and clap your hands She was going to crack up. God is going to make you smile about it. Every enemy that tried to tear you down, God's going to give you strength and the stamina to laugh in their face. You better come on and clap your hands. Come on and bless him. Thank God for the word. Thank God for the word. 
like a trumpet God will make so that your praise will put your life back in order but you can't sit down and shut down on God you got to keep that worship and praise going you have survived for a reason you have purpose on your life come on clap your hands and praise him take your seat take your seat hallelujah I believe lives are changed right now. I said lives are changed right now. I speak it right now and I declare it. It don't do you no good to keep coming to church and you still stuck and going through the same thing. At some point, you gotta get some backbone and walk gracefully and go gangster gracefully. Y'all didn't hear that. Let the devil know that it's, it's enough is enough. Like the woman of God said, enough is enough. You got to get to a point where you make your mind up. Enough is enough. You ain't the only one that been through. It's some testimonies in here 
that is making the devil mad right now because you're sitting in here. But thanks be unto God that he allowed you to survive for somebody else to be encouraged. Hallelujah. Clap your hands one more time. Praise God. Well, our time has been far spent. Come on, let's appreciate this woman of God. Thank you. Thank you, my dear sister, Evangelist Maxine Kershaw. Thank you for blessing us and making up this wonderful Women's Day. I knew God put you on my heart to come and bless us. And we will be reminded that God promises is still good. Right? God's promises. So thank you. Come on, let's love on her again. God bless you. All of my ladies, right quick, I just want to do a few thank yous. Thank you. Mother Bogan, can you just wave your hand? We love you. Come on, help me love on Mother Bogan. Thank you for being with us today. Amen. We're so glad that she has come to come and join us and worship with us today. Uh, right quick, all of the women that had a hand in, I have, don't have time to call names, but everybody from the prayer breakfast on the beginning of the service, everybody stand on your feet. If you had a part in the program, had a hand in this wonderful Women's Day, I want you to stand. Sister Lorraine gave us a mighty word on this morning, and I, I mean, she preached, y'all. I'm just going to say it. She preached. Yes, she did. Brought a word in the house. I want to thank everyone that put a hand in it. My women's committee, all of you that bought those prayer breakfast tickets. And uh, Judge Brian, she here? Come on, let's give it up for Judge. Stand, Judge Brian. Y'all really missed it if y'all wasn't here. Literally, this lady, her profession is one of being one of the judges here in Michigan. And she came on Friday night and it was amazing. And it was order in the court. And that's why I don't want no women to be left out because I believe women were blessed by what she gave us uh, the other night. So you gotta make sure that the next women's event we have participate because we're not just coming up with having a women's day and having weekends. It's for you to feast off of. Amen? Come to my office. Oh, well, Sister Sheen, I need you to help me and pray for me. Did you come to the women's conference? We had all the word. I'm here to pray for you. Now, you can come to my office anytime. But I need you to participate. Because God gives me something to give to you. Amen? And it's up to you to be there and participate. God bless you, but those of you that have participated, thank you so much. I love you, and our time is just really, really gone, so we're going to stand at this time. Let's say amen to our bishop. We love you, bishop. Amen. He's watching. I know. That's why I want y'all to stand right quick. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. The men's offering, all the men that did not give, those of you that did not give, um, I kind of, you know, had a little mistake, but I want you to do me a favor. If please leave your, if you be honest, if you didn't give, if you didn't give, I want you to be blessed and I want you to give your offering. If you can just place it on this the uh, stairs when you leave. Amen? Amen. Uh, Attorney Sinclair, would you come and dismiss us? Now may the grace of God and the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth now and forevermore. And the people of the Lord said, Amen. God bless everybody.